Hello, my name is Chris Swinford, and I'm the pulpit minister of the Faith Village Church of Christ here in Wichita Falls, Texas. Glad to have this moment of Bible study with you again, especially as we approach this time of the end of the year and the beginning of a brand new year. This has been a hard year. 2020 will go down in history as maybe the hardest year we've ever faced. Many people have been sick and ill this year. There have been many funerals, at least here at Faith Village, but I know everywhere, been many struggles of different kinds. Uh, many of the normal things we would do have been disrupted, and even the holidays seemed especially strange and odd this year. I do feel bad, though, for those who believe that leaving 2020 and beginning 2021 everything's going to be perfect from this point on because it won't be. We'll still be dealing with the coronavirus into this coming year. We will still have problems that we face. We'll still have issues to deal with. But I do pray that we have more peace and lack of viruses and other things in the year to come. But we are thinking primarily about physical things. I think we need to be focused also on spiritual things. Every year end I make resolutions for the coming year and every year end at least the last 10 or 12 my resolutions physically have been the same. I need to eat less, I need to exercise more, and I need to lose weight. As you can tell that's still true, that's still something I need to do and I hope you'll pray for me that I'll be able to do that. But also pray that I will remember to do some special spiritual things, some spiritual house cleaning as I close out this year and began another year. The last several years I have made these four things that we're going to be talking about my resolutions for living in a new year. And I got to tell you that it's made the beginning of a year and it's made my years better as I've gone through and tried to live out these principles. I want to continue to live that way, continue to base myself on these four resolutions from Scripture and have a better life this year, coming year than I have in years to come. I want to share these four resolutions with you. I've talked about them before. I have mentioned them to many. I've spoken about them in different places through the years. I want to share them with you and hopefully you'll be able to use these in your life as well. Resolution number one, I resolved to put my failures behind me and allow myself to start over. I got to tell you, in 2020, my pro biggest problem in life wasn't viruses, it was sin. That has been true every year of my life. Sin is the ultimate problem that I have. And I'm so thankful that I know the answer to that sin problem. I was baptized into Christ Jesus. My sins were washed away and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you can say that as well. And if you cannot say that, I pray that you will end this year and begin the next year by being baptized into Christ. Because there's such freedom in having your sins taken away and knowing that God is living in you. I also know from Scripture that as a baptized believer, as I follow after Jesus, trying to be like Him, and as I have fellowship with His church, that I am continually being forgiven, that my sins are being taken away. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 says, But as we walk in the light, see Himself in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus' Son cleanses us of all sin. I have forgiveness of sin. I pray you do as well. And as someone forgiven of sin, I need to put those sins behind me. I need to not focus on those anymore. I need to realize that God has not only forgiven them, He has pushed them from His memory. And I need to do that as well. Listen to what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through verse 14. He says, Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me His own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, 
forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of, Christ, of God in Christ Jesus. He says this is the thing we must do. We must forget what is behind us. We must strain forward and push forward into what God wants us to do. That's what Paul had as a resolution in Philippians chapter 3. And it's got to be a resolution that I have in the world today. If God has forgiven my sin, I need to put those things behind me. And I need to push forward to being the type of person that God would have me be. But I can't push forward and be that person without remembering to leave my sins behind me. So as I enter 2021, I want to leave the sins of 2020 behind. I want to push them behind me and move confidently forward. Again, if your sins are being forgiven because you're a child of God, born into His family, fellowshipping His family and following after Jesus, you can have this resolution yourself. You can make this resolution. This first resolution is resolving to put our failures behind us and allowing ourselves to start over. We've been studying together on Sundays about confession. One of the examples we looked at was King David. David committed horrible sins. He was out walking on the walls or on top of his palace and he noticed Bathsheba bathing and he lusted after her. He sent men to her and he committed adultery with her and she came to be with child. He brought Uriah, her husband, home. And when Uriah would not go home to his wife because he was dedicated to his king, he sent him back to battle to be murdered in battle. David committed many horrible sins. But David also found forgiveness. Nathan the prophet in 1 Samuel chapter 12 approached him about his sin and David confessed that he had sinned in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13. And after he confesses it, Nathan says, then you're forgiven of it. We need to realize that if we are God's children and we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. As I mentioned before, I've got to be His child. But if I am, I can find forgiveness of sin. And if I'm forgiven of sin, I need to leave those sins behind me so that I can move forward and be the kind of person that God wants me to be. So resolution number one, I resolve to put my failures behind me and I resolve to allow myself to start all over. This is something that many of us can make. This is a resolution that I pray we can keep. Resolution number two is, I resolve to give up all my grudges and problems with people and let others start over as well. If it is a blessing for me to be able to start over as a member of the body of Christ, I've also got to let those others who are forgiven of sin start over as well. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 through verse 13 says, Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, with kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. He tells us how to live in this world with other people who are part of the body of Christ, other people who are part of the family of Christ. We choose to live God's way because God chose us. He chose us to be holy and beloved and compassionate and kind and humble and meek and patient. He called us and chose us to be forgiving of those we are around because we are a forgiven people. And he says, if the Lord has forgiven you, you must also forgive one another. If you're a forgiven child of God and God has forgiven your sin, I've got to agree with God and just allow those sins to be forgiven and I've got to treat you the right way and move on just as God does for me, I should do for you. We in the Lord's Church are not meant to be fighting each other. 
we're meant to be forgiving each other. Philippians chapter 4, verse 2 through verse 3, we read about two sisters in Christ, two incredible sisters in Christ. They have been uh, ministers together with Paul. Their names are written in the book of life. They're going to heaven. But Yodia and Syntyche, we find out in Philippians 4, 2 through 3, have problems with each other and they cannot get along. Paul says someone needs to get them back together. They are saints of God. They're in the family of God. They're in the body of Christ. They need to get along. And we need to get along with those who are forgiven as well. We must be able to forgive others the way that God has forgiven us. And we must be compassionate, kind, humble, meek, patient. We must bear with one another and we must forgive one another. It's not a nice suggestion. It's a command from God. And just like Yodi and Sintiki, when they were fighting, God says, stop. You've got to stop this. And Paul tells them, somebody bring them back together because it's wrong for them to act this way. Well, it's wrong when I act that way as well. So I resolve, secondly, to give up my grudges and to let others start over just as God has allowed me to start over. The third resolution. I resolve to restore and re-energize my relationships and let us start over together in those relationships. There are so many different people that I have relationships where we interact with each other all the time and I want to be better in every one of those relationships. I want to have a better attitude, I want to act better, I want to do better in all those different things. Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 17 and 18, But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to that standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, you become slaves of righteousness. I want to be a good student of God's Word and learn those standards that we read about in God's Word, that singular standard that I am to be. And I want to be the kind of person God would want me to be in all the relationships that I have. I want to live God's way. And I want to be a slave to righteousness. And I want that to permeate the way that I live with other people. Peter disappointed Jesus. He denied Jesus three times. And Peter carried that incredible weight after he had done this in John chapter 18. In John chapter 21, Jesus comes to Peter and gives him the chance to affirm him three times, saying, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. He denied him three times. He affirmed him three times. Jesus let him start over again in their relationship. And because of this, Peter became the man who could preach on the day of Pentecost. Now we could go back through the Greek words used for love and and all these other things, but the main point is simple. Peter got to start over again in his relationship. If I am a forgiven child of God, which we saw in our first resolution, And if I am able to let others begin again, which we saw in that second resolution, the third resolution must be true. I've got to really focus on enhancing and re-energizing and restoring the relationships that I have. As a forgiven child of God, in relationships with other forgiven children of God, we not only get to start over, but we'll have a better relationship in the coming year than we've ever had before. And maybe we need one of those moments where we just say we're going to let each other start over and we're going to do it better this year than we've ever done before. The fourth resolution, I resolve to put away any continuing sins and to start over. There are some sins that I've committed in my past that I'm going to repeat. And I commit to God and to myself that when those things come up, I'm going to stop those behaviors. I'm not going to allow myself to continue to sin that way in the future. But I'm going to focus 
much of my attention on stopping those continuing sins and starting over. Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through verse 14 says, Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what's honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. I need to determine to be honorable in the sight of God. There are some sins that I've committed in my past that I sometimes repeat. I need to get past those. I need to work on those areas where I know I'm deficient, where I know I make mistakes, those areas where Satan finds me vulnerable. And I need to take advantage of this opportunity to start over again in those areas and to rededicate myself to stopping that behavior. And I know that many of you do as well. It's so important to have the opportunity to start over. What an incredible blessing it is to be able to start over. And as we close 2020 and as we begin 2021, I think it's more important than ever to take advantage of this opportunity and to resolve to not only get fit physically, but to get fit spiritually and be the spiritual kind of person that God wants us to be. So for 2021, these are my resolutions. Well, first of all, I am going to eat less. I am going to exercise more. I am going to lose weight. I'm determined to do that. But also, in addition to that, I'm going to put my failures behind me. I'm going to let what God has forgiven be behind me and push forward ahead into a better future. If you're a child of God, I hope you'll make that resolution, resolution as well and put your failures behind you and move on to being what God would want you to be. Secondly, I'm going to give up my grudges. I'm going to give up the problems I have with people. I'm going to let other people start over. If God allows me to start over, I'm going to allow other people to start over as well. Third, I'm going to restore and re-energize my relationships. I'm going to really work on being right in the way that I deal with others. And I'm going to put new energy into being right in my relationships. And four, I'm going to work on those things that keep coming back, those sins that continually afflict me. And I'm going to give extra special effort to changing those behaviors, changes those habits, and living right in the days to come. It's such a blessing to be a forgiven child of God to be able to start this new year over fresh. It's such a blessing to be in the family of God and allow others around me who are faithful to God and following God and born again in Christ Jesus to start over. It's such a blessing to be able to start over again in my relationships with people of faith who've been baptized for mission of their sins and who are living for Christ day by day. Well, this message has great hope for those who are Christians. For those who are not, it really doesn't offer you any hope other than this. You can become a child of God. You can repent of your sins. You can confess that you are sinful and you're in need of a Savior and that Jesus is the Son of God. And you can have your sins taken away and you can be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can start all over. If you've never bowed your knee to Christ, this is the time. That's the ultimate resolution. You need to give your life to Christ, find forgiveness, and move forward into a year better than you ever dreamed possible. Pray that you'll give this some thought. If you would like to study God's Word together, please contact me here at the Faith Village Church of Christ. If you'd like to know how to be forgiven of sin, please contact us. We would love to share that with you. More than anything else in this life, we want you to go to heaven. And we pray that you'll give us the opportunity to help you do that. I pray that as 2020 comes to an end and 2021 becomes our new year, that we will put God first and that we will focus on spiritual things. It seems like in 2020 we focus so much on the physical. Let's focus on building ourselves up spiritually in the coming year. That will be the greatest blessing of all.